Carla Martinson with another episode of Conversations with Cupid. And I am again super excited. When am I never excited? Okay, but today is really juicy because I've got Chelly Campbell with me. Yay! Hey, Chelly. Hi, Carla. Well, okay, you guys. So money is a big issue in our society. We need money. We want money. We can't do without it. But it's super confusing, and some of us haven't always done the best that we could in this subject. So, Shelly, for you, any of you who don't know who she is, this is what I love. She says, I treat money disorders, spending bulimia, and income anorexia. I love it. Yes. <laughs> and her third book, From Worry to Wealthy, A Woman's Guide to Financial Success Without the Stress, was just released in February, and it was the number one best-selling new release in women business and budgeting and money management on Amazon. She's been featured on numerous television shows, more than 100 radio shows, quoted in Good Housekeeping, Pink, Lifetime, The Los Angeles Times, Entrepreneur, Essence, Woman's World, and more than 35 popular books. So we've got a lot, and we've got a lot in common because we're both redheads, we're both Geminis, and we both came to Los Angeles to be movie stars, and it didn't work out, so we took another direction. Yes! All kinds of things happen as you worm your way through this life. The things that you think you're going to do, you end up not doing or you do it for a while and then you go. For me, what happened was that acting in school was so much fun. Working with my buddies and a long run was four weeks. But I got a job out at Disneyland five shows a day, five days a week for nine months. And I thought I would die of boredom. Oh, that's the Gemini. Because even when I was a waitress and I had to repeat the specials at each table like 10 times oh. a night, I couldn't stand it because I was repeating. So I thought, yeah. <laughs> we, no. have to do, we have to be doing different things all the time, right? Yeah. So I eventually fell into a bookkeeping job and I loved it. Who knew? You know, that was never on the schedule, but I found I was good at it. And so I owned a bookkeeping service. And then I saw that so many people didn't know how to do the accounting thing or how to make money and how to be profitable in their business. So I started teaching it. And so what, what you could say now is I'm actually an actress doing a one woman show on money. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. And I turned my acting into helping people find their soulmate and then writing books and talking about it. So those skills Perfect. for everybody in life who thinks that they're, uh, dream or their original plan didn't work out. You know, the universe has a way of taking our skills and putting it to where it's needed. And yes, yeah. So I think. and I'm so much more fulfilled now doing what I'm doing. It's just it's wonderful. So oh. everything works out. Everything works out. And uh, you know, I I love what you said on one of your videos that I watched this morning. It was love your life your clients, your friends, your job, your house. If you don't like your house, move. If you don't like your job, quit If you and get another one. If you don't like your husband, work it out or get a new one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, life is too short and there are so many options and people seem to get stuck in trying to create security or being safe and they you know, once they're in a situation, moving just seems so scary, even if their situation is bad. And I say, no, there are good situations out there. There's fun to be had, people to love. Go for it because there is no security. There isn't a job you can't lose, a home that can't burn down, a stock that can't lose its value, somebody that you love who won't die. Mm -hmm. Everything is going to happen. Right. So you might as well have fun doing what you want. And just go for it. And just like yeah. um, there's a guy called Daryl Anka, and he, he channels an, an extraterrestrial entity called Bashar, and I just love him. And whether people believe he's really channeling or not, he has the greatest information. And he says, Bashar says, uh, live your highest excitement. Every day, just find out what, yes. what do you want to do, what makes you the most happy, uh, and do that every day. Right. Well, people sometimes say, well, what's your purpose or what do you think your purpose is? And I just think my purpose is joy and enthusiasm and teaching people how to have fun. <laughs> and, so, I, you know, and I want to say, you know, okay, a lot of people are stuck in jobs that they don't like, but they can't just quit because they've got a family or bills or they don't know what to do or the job market is bad. Um, mm. So 
I always say do what you love on the side or for 15 minutes a day or an hour a day and you can kind of move that into a career if you keep doing yes. it. What do you say about that? I do. And read the, the job postings everywhere online and in the newspaper. There's always listings. And I tell people to read them from A to Z. Even electrical engineering, which may be the farthest thing from your talents and skills, but somewhere in there, it might be an electrical engineering company needs a person to do massage on a regular basis. You never know. Yeah, get creative and think outside your, you know, normal, think outside that box. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, speaking of, you know, I really want to, you're the best at this, women and money. Um, and especially 50 plus, you know, here we're getting older and you said life is short. And it's so funny because when you're young, you're in your 20s, you don't think life is short. You think you have forever. And I think the biggest mistake of my life was not saving money uh, from the get go when I was in my 20s because I would be a millionaire or multimillionaire by now. I started late. Luckily, I woke up and I have a husband that harps on me all the time, which makes me crazy, but I'm glad he did it. Um, he's yes. kind of like, you know, kick my ass. <laughs> but now, so I have an IRA and I have a savings and we bought a house and uh, we're debt free and I own my car <laughs> and it, it feels so good not to have uh, any debt or anything on my back because it used to just, uh, I couldn't it can sleep. Weigh it. On you, it would weigh on me. But I did start late, but I feel like, okay, I've got a momentum going. So what are the yeah. tips for that you can give women maybe 40, 50 plus in age now that didn't do what maybe they should have done? How can they catch up or what should they be doing? You're, it's never too late. I, one of my absolute idols is a man named Harry Bernstein. And there was an article written about him and he got his first book published at age 96. And then he published three more books before he died at age 101. And his quote was, the 90s were the most productive years of my life. Oh, I love if it. If that doesn't give all of us courage and hope, we're not done. It isn't like, you know, the media would like you to believe that you're going to be broke and really sick and desperate when you're old. And they think old is 65. Well, I'm 67. Hello, do I look done to you? <laughs> Far from it. You know, really. I was so annoyed with Susie Orm, and I wrote about this in my new book, because um, she said in one of her columns in O Magazine, a woman had written in and said, I'm 48 years old, and I have a corporate job, and I have nine months worth of expenses saved, and I want to open a cake decorating business. It's been my dream forever. Can I do it? And Susie said, if you were 22, I'd tell you to go ahead, but these are the most important years for depositing into your 401k. Like retirement is the end all and be all, and all the financial planners are guilty of this. Like you've got to save every penny you make, and it's so annoying because, you know, yeah, you want to have six months worth of expenses. You want to have an IRA. You want to have some savings. But if you don't have it, all is not lost for you. Get creative. What can you think of to do? What talents and, spill and skills do you possess that somebody would pay you for? I don't see retiring as, you know, not working. I love my work. See, that's the problem. Retirement was made up for those people who hate their work. And so you want to stop doing it at some point. Exactly. But I don't Get that hate gold it. Watch I like and, it. and be done with it, right? Yeah. So I'm going to teach my workshops forever because I get so much out of it. I work with people. I help them. They get financially better. They do the, their dream job or they create a business that supports them. And then they say, oh, Shelly, you're so wonderful. I need that. I like that in my life. Okay, so I don't want to stop doing it. So I'm going to have an income from that. I'm going to have an income from residuals for my books. So you can write a book or create a product that's going to be sold without your needing to be there. Um, I'm going to have Social Security, you know. It's not going away. The American people is never going to let the politicians take it away. Right. Too many people depend on it. So you're going to have that as a stream of income, too. So 
that is important and that's regular income like a pension yeah which yeah. pensions have gone the way of the dodo except for government employees so you have your own you have to create your own mm -hmm. but it doesn't matter if it's late and if you haven't got a lot of assets right now you can always build them think make a list of all the things you could do that people might pay you for Exactly. Now, for instance, I have a, a, a girlfriend who is in her late 40s in a job that's not her dream, but it pays the bills and she has fun at it, but it's draining. And how long can she do it? It's a physical job. How long could she do it, sure. uh, you know, as the years go by? And uh, she has a, a, a hobby that she absolutely loves and she knows more about it than anybody. And I said, you know, I know you're not going to do this, but I think you should, you could start a blog about it. You could be an expert, have your cute little picture made in like, you know, cartoon form or something put up there. You can start. She, and she said, Marla, I'm too old. It's too late. And, and, oh, I, and I said, oh, oh no, and, and, and here I am doing, you know, my show now, I'm writing a fifth book, I do my blog, I'm matchmaking, I'm heat, yeah. I got credentials in crystal healing and Reiki, and I'm having people come over for healings, and, and I'm just like, what else can I do, what else can I do, because I want to get up in the yeah. morning and say, gosh, today I've got this going on, I'm interviewing yeah. Chelly, and I've got a crystal healing client, <laughs> and I'm matching up some people, soulmates, and, and uh, I, I don't ever... It just breaks my heart when a woman or anybody says at 45, 50, 55, 60, oh, it's too late, can't do it now. If yeah. you're healthy and you have a brain and, and desire and, and get, get up in the morning, you can do whatever you damn well please. I don't care how many wrinkles you have on your face or what the media says. Well, and I know a lot of people are going to watch us talking and say, oh, well, it's easy for you. You've got that kind of personality. And I'm going to tell you, I did not have that personality when I began. I was the the kind of actor you've heard of that is a wallflower in their personal life. Okay. And then they can be on on stage, but I, I couldn't, I didn't know how to network or how to do social skills or I was sort of introverted. I'm really kind of an introverted person. I'm very happy and comfortable by myself or just with one or two other people. But I trained myself because when I owned my bookkeeping service and I saw how many people didn't understand how money worked and how to be profitable, and especially women not asking for the money they were worth, not knowing how much they were worth, and being afraid and thinking, oh, well, if I ask for too much, they'll think I'm arrogant or conceited, and then they wouldn't do sales because they didn't want to bother people. And I said, I, I have to teach people how to do this which meant I had to learn how to do it first. Mm -hmm. So I was sort of driven by the need to inspire and help people. And that made me be able to go to a networking meeting and do my little round robin in front of the room, although my knees shook for the first couple of years. And then to call somebody I met afterwards and say, hey, let's get together for coffee or tell me more about you and your business so I can refer business to you. You know, who doesn't want to hear that? Yeah, exactly. So it became easy for me. I just got good at asking questions and asking other people how life was for them and what were they missing and what did they like and how could I help? And from that, people said, oh, I want to take your class. And then my whole business bloomed because of that. So when people say, oh, it's easy for you, Chelly, you're a natural, I go, uh, 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 wrong. Not natural. And, and and for me as well, I mean, I here I flunked uh, general math, like <laughs> barely got through math three times. I mean, he, I, I used to cry. I'd ask my dad to help me with my homework, and I'd sit there crying, literally crying. I hate numbers, and that's maybe why I didn't, you know, my husband, he watches the financial channel every day. He was on to, with Fidelity yesterday for my IRA, going, asking all these questions and opening a new account, and we're going to put money in here, and thank goodness he's just so good. He likes it, and... And uh, but he's also creative. He's a composer and a musician. But here I'm just the creative type. I don't want to even hear about it. But right. we have to. And never in my dreams did I ever think I'd own my own business. I thought I can't do that. I, I was in my late 40s when I started my own matchmaking business. I was scared. I thought, who if if somebody's not happy, I can't send them to the boss to complain. 
I'm going to have right. to buck stops right. here. I'm going to, but you know what? As the years go by, I get more confident. I don't, you know, yes. I'm, and, and you learn along the way and you can look anything up. You can take classes. You can have a mentor. I'm mentoring another matchmaker now who's young and starting. Uh, so it, there's Yay. no, like you said, any age, just go for it. We're here when we're underground, you know, that's another story. But while we're here, let's make the most of it and just go balls to the wall. Yeah, just go for it. And it, every woman I know has given advice to somebody, even children. Yes. If you've organized kids and got children to do what you tell them to do or get your boyfriend to go to the movie you want to see, you can make sales. Yeah. It's the same thing. <laughs> Okay, everything is sales. Everything I taught myself, you know, the um, the auto shows where they have the beautiful, tall, gorgeous models. I auditioned for that when I was, you know, I'm short, I'm cute, not beautiful, but I auditioned for this, and the guy kept, I kept making jokes and being flirty with the guy, and he kept laughing, and he kept keeping me on. So he hired five beautiful, tall models, and he said, "You come into my office." He goes. <laughs> You know, you're so fun, but you're not the type for right. this. And I said, well, I know I'm not the type, but let's look at the bottom line here. What do you want to accomplish? You want to sell cars, don't you? Mm -hmm. He goes, yeah. I said, you hire me. Give me this test. I'll sell cars. Mm -hmm. He goes, okay, you talked me into it. It can't hurt. So I said, well, I need a brochure on all the cars. It was Oldsmobile, I remember and I memorized all the stats. And then when I was at the show, I'd stand by the car instead of just talking about the car and looking pretty. That wasn't my gig. I just said, hey, you look at cars, you got to see this one. This has got an engine that won't quit. Let me show you. <laughs> I sold so many cars. The guy offered me a job at the end of the show. <laughs> oh, yeah. So you, so it's really using what we've got. Like It's just... Filling a need. Filling a need and using the skills that we have. Uh, I love Rita Davenport. I uh, don't know if you're familiar oh, with yes. Okay, the wonderful Rita Davenport, which was actually my in the 80s, I'd watch her at night doing like infomercial for her for her, yeah. her um, cassette tapes and stuff. And she wrote a book called Making Time, Making Money. And she, uh, you know, what skills? She was a mother, a housewife. And she said, you use what you've got. She was a good cook and she was a home ec teacher. So she wrote a cookbook. And then, yes. you know, so she said, you always just look at what you've got, what's, everybody's got skills and hobbies. Um, exactly. And you don't, might not think, okay, I can turn this into money, uh, but you can, because just d dig deep and see what, what do you, what are you doing on your off time? If you know something about anything, you can teach somebody who doesn't know and needs to know. Exactly. And all you have to do in a class is be one one lesson plan ahead of the students. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and you're learning, so the teacher's learning too sometimes. Yeah, and anytime you don't know stuff, you can just say, you know, I don't know, but I know where to go to look it up, and I'll find out for you and report back. <laughs> Chelly, I love it. All right, so the so the takeaway here for, for women over 50 who didn't save, what are your top three uh, tips for the takeaway? Well, start saving now. Figure out a business you could do, teach a class or take a hobby and do instructional videos, write a blog, look at every kind of part-time job available and know that it's not too late. You can do it. You can find something that somebody will pay you for All right. and do it. I love it. Thank you so much. And to everybody, I'm going to put the links down below where you can connect with Chelly and her uh, books and everything. And um, we'll see you next time. Also, if anybody has a question, put it in the comments below because we'll answer it in the next video. Take care. Love it. Bye. Thanks, Marla. Bye.